Hello, my chickens here are joining me. They're free range chickens, which means that they get to go wherever they want. And I would hope that we could be free range Vermonters, but we can't anymore because we can't go where we want because Governor Scott has issued another one of his edicts saying that you can't travel freely if you are not vaccinated. Uh, you, are, you are free to go if you're vaccinated. Uh, this is discriminatory and uh, this is a mark or a, a vaccination card which he is taking more steps we're told towards to require us even though there is no uh, scientific evidence whatsoever that being vaccinated prevents you from spreading it to other people so you see there's no justification under the law to be tracking people but perhaps there is some desire to get us all compliant and there's a lot of coercion going on now let me talk to you about the mark of the beast. That's what this is about. We're going to talk about the biblical mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 13, uh, verses 16 through 18, where the Bible talks about a futuristic situation where this uh, horrible system comes in, where we um, are under total, complete totalitarian domination, and you can't buy or sell goods, and Christian believers are targeted. And most people are, even non-Christians, are familiar with this allusion to the 666 and the mark of the beast. So I'm going to talk about that by talking about some different things. I'm going to talk about um, the actual technology and the actual marks that we already have. So here I'm going to quote from the general situation about where we find ourselves as Americans living in technology today. Quote, oh, and, oh, this is about the technology related to the coming cards and how far this is actually from last year or some time ago, the cards for COVID. So here's the technology. A coalition of public and private entities are reportedly collaborating to launch Common Pass, a trusted, globally interoperable platform for people to document their COVID-19 status, their health declarations, their PCR tests, and their vaccinations, to satisfy country entry requirements while protecting their health data privacy. IBM has also created its Digital Health Pass, which is designed to provide organizations with a way to bring people back into workplaces, schools, stadiums, and flights. Bring you back in. A way to bring you back in if you have the mark. If you don't have proof of vaccination, you can't take a flight, you can't fly overseas, you can't do a lot of things. You can't go in a grocery store without a mask right now, where I was today. After 9-11, we saw this happen. Here's a quote about 9-11. The corporate state has taken to monitoring all aspects of our lives, from cell phone calls and emails to internet activity and credit card transactions. Much of this data is being fed through fusion centers across the country, which work with the Department of Homeland Security to make threat assessments on every citizen, including school children. So we already have a certain surveillance state, do we not? And Orwell warned us in 1984 and elsewhere that we would volunteer to do this so that we'd be protected from these terrible threats from abroad. China has a social credit system, if you haven't worried, uh, heard, learned about it, reinforced with amazing face technology, face recognition technologies. It's quite eerie. Um, have a look. And they use it to oppress a lot of people, particularly the Uyghur. Uh, but listen to this quote about China's social credit system. Once discredited, limited everywhere is the message China's government announced in a report released in early March to the 23 million citizens it had banned from purchasing plane or train tickets the previous year. These citizens, the government declared, had be proven themselves to be, quote, untrustworthy. As a result, their freedom of movement has been revoked. The government is aiming for its full social credit program to be fully operational and compulsory for all 1.4 billion Chinese citizens by next year. By the way, that program started out as a voluntary one, just a test pilot. Now it's compulsory for 1.4 billion people. It forces them to adhere to a system of morality imposed by the political ruling party. Now we have COVID orders. Quote, stay at home orders, lockdowns and social isolation have meant that we rely on Silicon Valley companies to conduct basic life functions more than ever before. We order online from Amazon rather than shop. We conduct meetings online rather than meet in offices. We use Google constantly to navigate and communicate. We rely on social media more than ever to receive information about the world. And exactly as a weakened population's dependence on them has increased to unprecedented levels, their wealth and power has reached all new heights, as has their willingness to control and censor information and debate. And since this quote was taken, we see what's happened with Google and Amazon and others and YouTube censoring all kinds of information here in the United States. In Time magazine, 
uh, a commentator a few years ago coined the term surveillance capitalism, writing, Surveillance, surveillance capitalists learned that the most predictive data come not from just from monitoring, but also from modifying and directing behavior. For example, by 2013, Facebook had learned how to engineer subliminal cues on its pages to shape users' real-world actions and feelings. Later, these methods were combined with real-time emotional analyses, allowing marketers to cue behavior at the moment of maximum vulnerability. Democracy slept while surveillance capitalism flourished. As a result, surveillance capitalists now wield a uniquely 21st century quality of power, as unprecedented as totalitarianism was nearly a century ago. Remember, until Stalin and Hitler, we really didn't have quite those kind of examples of totalitarianism, which we are threatened with again now in America by this new uh, left-wing ideology that wants to swing, sweep aside our, our protections of privacy and uh, give us less freedom than these chickens. So scriptures aside, because this really wasn't about scripture, was it? The blind secular rush to submit to complete COVID domination reflects a sacrifice of hundreds of years of constitutional law and fundamental liberties on the fear-filled altar of COVID. Those who trust the government that pharmaceutical industry to save or inoculate them, seek a dubious savior indeed. One biblical scholar uh, to close said this about that biblical passage, about uh, Revelation chapter 13. The kingdom of the beast is a human kingdom, an evil kingdom instead of a divine one. The nature of humanity apart from God is demonic. The kingdom of the beast promises life and prosperity but brings death, misery, and devastation. That sounds a lot like a COVID card, or maybe the social credit card in China, or maybe it's Governor Scott's new stepping stone towards the national COVID card that you have to prove you got vaccinated even though you don't hurt anybody by electing to decline. I will decline, and I don't think anybody should comply with this. And if you were gonna get a vaccination, this would be a good reason not to, because why would this matter if you're just taking care of your own health? Thank you for listening. I hope you'll learn more about what your government is doing and what your constitution does to protect you from it. Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy Vermont in the springtime.